Hold, hold the phone a second. Min Minnie's form is doing motherboards now? What? Yes, I have in my hand the BD770i that comes with a CPU. It comes with the 7745HX. Eight cores and 16 threads plus the Radeon 610M, dual channel DDR5. But in a mini ITX form factor? Minis form? Have you lost your mind? No, and in fact, this may be the secret ingredient for building an ultimate low cost, high performance workstation, even if you're gonna add a discrete GPU. Let's take a look. This is Ryzen 7000 series, but these CPUs are meant for notebooks. And let's face it, AMD is killing it with their notebook CPUs. They uh, are selling so well, they're having trouble getting enough of them to actually put in notebooks, to say nothing of desktop class machines. And if you're into building a small form factor machine, you may say, well, but you know, later I might want to upgrade the GPU, I might want something else. This might be the ultimate cheat code for building a high performance gaming machine at the lowest possible cost, because Let's face it, we've gotten to the point where building the ultimate gaming machine is really about spending the most money on the graphics card, but with also, you know, the consideration that you get a CPU good enough not to bottleneck the graphics card. And unless you're buying a $2,000 GPU, this is not going to bottleneck pretty much any modern GPU. And this motherboard has an X16 expansion slot, even though it's a mobile processor. Uh, there's a little asterisk there. We'll have to suss that out in testing. But for now, let's take a look at the board. What do you get in the box? Minis Forum, conventions using this manual, PCIe expansion slot, two sodium slots, so it is notebook style memory. In the box, you get the fanciest Wi-Fi antenna that I've ever seen. Minis Forum might've watched some of my reviews. This is far and away the best Wi-Fi antenna that I've ever seen. You get some fan mounting brackets and some long extension screws. Fan mounting brackets? Yeah, Minis Forum's got you covered. Let's take a look at that. And then of course some more M.2 mounting screws and uh, more fan screws. There's a lot going on in this little package. Now you've got one fan built in. It's actually for your M.2. It doesn't come with a CPU cooling fan, but it does come with a CPU heat sink. Very interesting. You do also get a rear I.O. shield. At the rear I.O., you've got three analog audio, your two and a half gig ethernet port, two regular old USB 2.0 ports, a type C combination display port, USB port, a full size display port, a full size HDMI port, and two type A ports that are USB 3.2 gen two. Now while this motherboard does support a 20 pin, five gigabit, dual front panel connector. There is no type C header on this motherboard. So if you pick up a case, that has got a front panel type C. It's not going to work with this motherboard. We do have three four pin fan headers, which will deliver up to one amp of power each. So that's a pretty nice touch. Now, depending on what kind of build you're going for, it's bring your own 120 millimeter cooling fan. And it comes with the, the mounting hardware that you need for that. I have selected the P12 Slim PWM from Arctic. Arctic is a vastly underrated cooler company. They make Coolers, tower coolers, fans, you name it. The P12 Max is one of my favorites, but the P12 Slim is gonna be great for our particular build that I've picked. What case do I think pairs really well with this motherboard? Well, I mean, it's ITX, so you can put it in anything you want, but in particular, the Fractal Terra. This is a pretty fun little case because you can pick how big the GPU chamber is and how big the CPU chamber is. In our case, we're gonna maximize the GPU chamber because, well, I mean, look at it. It is absolutely tiny. The mythological build all the way on seven? It's doable. One minor annoyance is that in order to get the rear I.O. to sit properly, you're gonna have to unscrew the nuts on the wireless, which is dodgy. After that, at least your rear I.O. is built in, your I.O. shield. It also comes with two screws so you can mount the retention mechanism for the display port and the HDMI to the rear I.O., but that was super annoying, moving the nuts from the inside to the outside because it makes the wire, the antenna wireless connector loose and ugh. But we got it, so we're good. Now, because I am using a P12 fan that's slimmer than what Mini's form expects, I have to get my own screws. These screws are designed for a normal thickness fan, and if I use these, well, it's just not gonna work out for me. Oh, 
Well, holy crap, that actually worked. Dang. We'd certainly be hard-pressed to build a quieter system with just the one 120mm fan before we add our GPU, of course. So what's it looking like for performance? Well, it's a 7745HX. Dragon range. Technically, this is a 55 watt maximum TDP, but as you can see from our hardware info 64, it's more like 100 watts. And at 100 watts, you can hear that little 120 millimeter fan ramp up, and it does run at 91 degrees C thereabouts. So you're entering thermal throttling territory. It'll it'll boost up to about 100 watts, and then it backs off to like 91, 92 watts. The boosting behavior and all that sort of stuff seemed to work correctly, at least, in that there was no crashing or instability issues even letting Cinebench run overnight. But yeah, 89 to 90 to 91 degrees C running at 90 watts, it's pretty substantial. In terms of real world multi-core performance, that's better than a 9900K. It's not quite as good as a 5800X, but for single thread performance, you can actually get a little bit better single thread performance than a 5800X unless you're in like super optimal cooling situation with the 5800X. And then the 5800X might be a little bit better it's they're close they're really really close so what you really save on is power because in this configuration with no gpu most of the time you're going to be well under 100 watts in fact right now even running geekbench at the wall i'm consuming only 96 watts according to our kilowatt most of the time when this thing's idling it's like 11 watts which Frankly, it's shocking considering that, you know, I'm running an 850 watt power supply and at the very low end of the wattage spectrum, those are only like 87%, 85% efficient. Most of my wattage is going into the, the power supply because I'm anticipating adding a crazy GPU to this thing. Fortunately, the design of the cooler does force most of the warm air out the back through the mini ITX IO shield. So our P12 fan is doing its job, even though it's the slim variant. Of course, if you don't have to run a slim variant of the fan, you'd probably be a little bit better off with a fan that'll move a little bit more air. The P12 Max would be a particularly good choice if you don't need the slim variant because it's designed for use in a radiator and the fin stack here is pretty dense and the extra static pressure from the P12 Max is probably going to improve things in terms of cooling for this particular cooler layout. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a 55 watt CPU running at like 100 watts. I mean, Minis Forum, woo! It's a mobile CPU in a desktop format, and they're pushing it to the max. And it's surprisingly good in that configuration, like shockingly good. You want some cheat codes for a mini PC? This is probably it. For the GPU, let's do the 7900 XTX AMD edition, because that one's one that I know will fit. I mean, could we even cram a reference 4090 in there? Ooh, just barely. I think I'd rather have the 7900 XTX, though. Hey. This is now, I think, one of my favorite builds in the world. I love the tiny little Terra case. I love the fact that this is basically no compromises. I love a lot of things about this. Okay, let's take a quick look at our gaming benchmark performance. You might be surprised. So, how much performance do you leave on the table using Mobile Zen 4? Well, it was more than I thought it would be. It was kind of surprising. At 1080p, for some games, over 100 FPS. I mean, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is an older AAA title. I wasn't expecting it to be this much of a difference in 1080p, but it is. Fortunately, in 1440p and 4K, the difference is, is much less pronounced. I mean, our 7800X3D is the best of the best as far as gaming CPUs go and gaming CPU value. It can still make sense to use this motherboard as your platform because you're going to put more dollars into your GPU. It's also true that there's not going to be a 100 FPS difference unless you get the very most expensive GPU that you can, or even a next generation GPU if you're watching this sometime after, you know, early 2024. So, yeah, you are leaving a little bit of performance on the table, gaming performance, at 1080p and 1440p, but not really anything at 4K. Take that with a little bit of a grain of salt. If you look at our other games like Cyberpunk 2077 uh, or Horizon Zero Dawn, worst case scenario, you're leaving about 30 FPS on the table with the 7900 XTX. So overall, this is a really terrific showing for this platform, but if you have to have, you know, that 150 plus FPS baseline at 1440p, you're going to need higher single thread performance than this platform can deliver. But still, this much performance in under a 100 watt envelope, it is very impressive. So let's talk PCIe lanes for a second. This really does have 16 lanes to the GPU. I didn't think that mobile parts had 
16 plus 4 plus 4, but it appears this platform does indeed have 16 plus 4 plus 4. I mean, that 16x slot, Miniswarm says, is PCIe Gen 5. I don't have an easy way to test that, but I can confirm it is running at Gen 4 by 4, 16 lanes. I mean, it's pretty nuts that this is a mobile platform. Plus, you've also got your M.2 as well, two of them. It is not USB 4, as far as I can tell. At least I couldn't get the single singular USB-C on the back to behave as if it was USB 4. It is USB plus DisplayPort alt mode, so you can run dual DisplayPort off of the motherboard. And the built-in 610M, that's no slouch. You can definitely do eSports titles with that. But uh, the 7900 XTX, it's pretty swanky. Adrenaline, of course, picked up the platform and worked just fine with it. It would be nice to see more features in the BIOS, and I wish that as Mini's forum moves forward developing these platforms, that they do more and more frequent BIOS updates, bug fixes, that sort of thing. It might have been nice to see an RGB header or two on this motherboard with control software that's properly supported by Windows 11's built-in RGB control or other quality-of-life features. That is maybe a little something to worry about. I mean, ultimately, this is probably not a five-year platform, but considering you get literally everything except an inexpensive fan and you could bootstrap a system like this, I mean, even picking up used kit, this is a pretty strong argument against not getting an older platform because the performance really is here. I mean, maybe if you could get an older used AM4 platform and then upgrade to the 1500X3D, but barring exceptional edge cases like that for older platforms, so there's newer hardware, better IPC, better single thread performance, expandability because you got a PCIe expansion slot, a DDR5 platform, and I, I built it not in an inexpensive way. I mean, the Fractal Terra case is it's a nice designer case. And uh, I've gone for the uh, small form factor power supply, which again costs extra versus an ATX configuration. But g gosh darn it, this is nice. If you're thinking, hey, there might be some options in the BIOS, though. No. This is the very, very simplified BIOS that Minis Forum has going now. Boiler Snake would have liked to have seen some bifurcation options for that X16 slot, maybe run it at X8, X8. Remember Sliger? They still make their lunchbox X8, X8 case. Not gonna work with this motherboard. It's gonna run at X16 all the time, no matter what. You can disable Secure Boot, at least. That's nice. Well, that's been a quick look at the BD770i and a quick build in our Fractal Terra case with our Cooler Master 850 watt power supply, DDR5 5600. Now, the DDR5 situation is also a little weird here. Can you run DDR5 6000 on overclock? I wouldn't recommend it. Go with the baseline OEM JetX standard memory for this configuration. I think you're in for giving yourself a lot of headache if you do try to run with uh, some overclock memory profiles and that sort of thing. Uh, it's just, don't, don't push your luck, in other words. I'm Wildless Level 1, I'm signing out, and you can find me in the Level 1 forums. Good job, Minis Forum. I like the I like the new direction that you're going in. I, I like this over, uh, you know, some of the more creative endeavors that you've done in the past where you have a mini PC that has a PCIe expansion slot, and we sort of bolt on other stuff. This, this is more normal. I like it. An absolutely top tier work on the Wi-Fi dongle antenna. You will not find a better Wi-Fi dongle antenna thingy in any bundle anywhere. This is, this is record setting. Literally the best Wi-Fi rabbit ears that I have ever seen. Good job, Miniform. Although, I wonder if the antennas being so close together would cause them to detune. Any RF experts in the audience there? I wonder this level one engagement challenge. I'm signing out. You can find me in the level one forums. Mm.